Welcome to ATC CAD. My name is David Atkins. Over the course of my 30 year CAD career, I've used a lot of different CAD systems. In a typical week, I use most of them professionally for various clients, but Fusion is a bit different. It's the software that I use most often when I'm making something just for myself. I see a lot of YouTubers using Fusion to design their projects. They tend to gloss over the design process so they can show the actual building of the project in greater detail. If you want to know how to use a table saw or configure a 3D printer, there are a lot of other channels with better cameras and lighting who are more than happy to show you how. This series is about using Fusion to solve problems by letting you ride along as I use it to design something useful in my life. To design something useful, you have to start with a problem to solve. My problem came from a loose plumbing connector in the bathroom that my kids use. I uh, was too lazy to go get pliers when I was hooking up a new plumbing line and didn't tighten it down enough. There's a lesson somewhere in there that I probably won't learn. The slow leak caused the flooring to peel up and this meant I needed to replace it. I found some vinyl plank flooring and decided I'd go with that. If you've ever placed plank flooring, then you know you need some kind of spacer to keep the planks in place while you bang them with a hammer. But I forgot them while I was at the store. Whoops. Actually, this was a good thing. The ones at the store came in packs of 40 and I only needed 6. The ones at the store also had the wrong spacing for the floor specification. The manufacturer wanted 3 8 inch, and the ones at the store were 1 quarter. So let's make some ourselves. There are a ton of different designs out there, from simple wedges to more complex shapes. Taking a look at 8 or so options gives me a good starting point on my design. Opening up Fusion, I created a new project folder, saved my file to the new project, and got started. Most projects in Fusion start with a sketch, and this one is no different. Using the Create a Sketch tool, I selected an origin plane, more or less at random for this project, and started sketching. I began with a rectangle, connected to the origin at one corner, and tried to figure out a good size for it. I decided that one and a half inches square would work. By hitting Tab, I can switch between the dimensions and type in what I need. Pressing Enter finishes the rectangle. Next, using the line tool, I sketch the ears of my spacer. My intent is to make one side 3 eighths and the other side 1 quarter. I've got a wall that isn't perfectly straight and figured this would be helpful. In case you're curious, this worked out great. I didn't bother trying to figure out the dimensions yet. I also made sure that when sketching the ear on the bottom that I did not align with the one on top. This would have added a collinear constraint that I don't want. Now it's time to add dimensions to the ears. I started with the depth, and I made up a dimension. I was wrong, by the way, but you'll see how I fixed that near the end. Since both ears should be the same depth, and I'm lazy, after placing the second dimension, I clicked on the first dimension. This lets both dimensions be controlled by a single number, which ended up being more useful than I realized when I needed to change it. Next, I added the width of the ears. One is set to one quarter, and the other is set to three eighths, just like I mentioned before. I thought about trimming the line between the ears and the main body, but thought better of it. I started doing an offset. Giving it a negative value puts the offset inside the rest of the body. Since I wanted to use less plastic, I also sketched a circle that I'll use to remove material from the final print. I just kind of eyeballed it since the dimensions aren't critical here. Then I used the rectangular pattern command to array the single circle into four evenly spaced circles. Again, I just eyeballed it here. I made the mistake of hitting enter when I set the first set of pattern quantities. No worries. Find the icon that represents the pattern and you can edit it over and over again until you get it right. Now I'm just clicking and dragging the circles around to get a size and a position that I'm not upset with. You can see here that by changing only one value on the ear depth, I can change both sides at once. Now that my sketch is done, it's time to extrude the profiles. The ears and the perimeter of the body get the same extrusion depth, I went with a half inch. Finishing the extrusion causes the sketch to be turned off or to be consumed, but we can still use it for the rest simply by finding the sketch in the model browser and turning it back on. Clicking on the remaining profile, I can extrude it a much smaller distance, 0.15, and there is the part. Now. Knowing that I'm a bit of an idiot, I decided to label the sides so I could tell which size each end was. I may use these again in a year or so, and I'm definitely going to forget by then. I start with a new sketch placed on the side face of the extrusion and begin the text command. 
I drag a rectangle to show the area where I want my text to fit and start typing. Clearly, the text is too big, so I try a few sizes to find the one I like. When I'm happy with the text height, I add a few more spaces to get them spread out like I want them to be. Now I'm going to extrude the text into the part. Since I'm going into the part, Fusion assumes I want to cut the part, and in this case it's right. Adjusting the depth to be more reasonable, and my labeling is done. I decided that I really wished I had rounded off the corners, so I opened up my original sketch and used the fillet tool to round them off. Because my interior sketch was an offset, it automatically updates as well. Since it had both corners in the same command, editing one dimension edits them both. Finishing the sketch shows the updated extrusion. Great! Saving my project, it's now time to get it ready to print. Going to File, 3D Print, I choose STL as the format and set it up as millimeter. Even though I designed it in inches, having the print in millimeters makes things easier as my printer is expecting millimeters. And I click on the body I want to export. I click OK, give the file a name, and I want to make sure the Save to my computer option is checked. Importing it into my slicer, just fast forwarding through this part, I make a few copies of it and set up the print. As you can see, this print will cost about $1.27, which isn't bad at all. Right before the print started, I thought to myself, hey, um, did you check the depth of the planks? And I hadn't. I grabbed my micrometer and measured the plank depth. Going back to the design, I opened up the original sketch and changed the ear depth to just under the value I measured and saved it as a print again. Luckily, I thought about this before any plastic was wasted. So how did it work? Pretty good. For about five minutes of design work and just over a dollar in plastic, I was able to complete my project. Since the print took about an hour, I also had an excuse to drink beer instead of driving to the store. Here are a couple shots of the finished print. Here's a shot of a few in action, and here's a shot of the completed floor. I've never installed a plank floor before, so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. If you'd like to use this for yourself, I put it up on printables where you can download it for free. Of course, you could also model it yourself and make it even better. If you found this helpful, I'd love to know. Clicking like is an easy way to do so. If you're learning Fusion and want to see more projects, click subscribe. This series is kind of a test to see what people find interesting. I use Fusion for 3D printing, woodworking, smart home stuff, electronics enclosures, product design, all kinds of things. If there's a topic you're interested in, let me know in the comments. If you're brand new to Fusion, I teach it. If you're interested in our Fusion, AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, MicroStation, Simple 3D, SketchUp, or 3DS Max classes, check us out at AtkinsTechConsulting.com. As always, I'm David, and happy catting.